Hello everyone. Recently I've been getting a lot of emails um, about the sticks that I'm using, uh, which is fine. Uh, I know you're all curious, so let's talk about that today and then I can refer everybody to this video. So I've been uh, making my own sticks uh, now for probably 15 years. And at, uh, originally, at that point, I I was making them just for fun. I wanted to learn how to do it because no one was making sticks out of these exotic hardwoods that I've been using to build furniture and other things for, I mean, basically almost 35, 40 years. So I said, hey, you know, maybe I should use some of this stuff to build some sticks because I had a lot of scraps from building, you know, I'd build tables and uh, cabinets and all kinds of things out of exotic hardwoods. And the scraps, I, I had so much scraps. So if I wasn't burning them, then, you know, I would maybe I should try to make some drumsticks. So over about a period of um, five years, uh, I bought a, a lathe, a couple lathes, and I modified them uh, just for drumstick making, which is kind of like spindle making. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of variables. And um, over the years, I've tried to teach people how to do it. It's very hard, very frustrating. I'm doing it mostly all freehand. Um, and, you know, just like anything else, you practice enough, you get good at it. So then after about maybe five years of making them for myself and my friends, I used to give them as gifts to people. Um, someone said, hey, you know, these are great. Why don't you sell them, you know? So a buddy of mine, Barry Greenspawn from Drummer's World, at the time, they had, he had a shop on 45th uh, Street. Um, in New York and uh, we, we, we've been friends for so many years and I sent him a bunch of sticks I said Barry let me send you these see what happens well I he sold out of them I think in like a couple weeks so I sent him more and he sold out of those and so this went on for a while he was selling them I was selling them and I probably sold all together in about two or three years a couple hundred pairs of sticks and then I got super busy with my kids and, um, you know, my university job, my orchestra job, my studio, and I kind of stopped for a while. Uh, and then I, I was sporadically going out there. I'd make three or four pairs because these take a while they make to, take, to make. They take about an hour uh, to make a pair. And that's originally it took me like four hours to make a pair. So I whittle it down to that. There's a lot of uh, a lot involved in the process. There's a lot of sanding. I have to make my own tools to make the tips. Um, there's a lot of grinding my own tools, a lot of sharpening. There's all kinds of things that are involved with this. So um, it's been on and off again. And recently with this uh, pandemic, I've had more time because all my gigs were canceled. So I've gone out there and made a bunch more sticks, as you see there. So uh, this has been wood that's been drying for about uh, 10 years. And some of these South American and African hardwoods are super moist, super wet. And so I'll get them, they'll be like, you know, over 20%, which is really a high moisture content. And in order to make a good stick, you need to get that down to six, even 5%, which is like really, really dry. And I have um, a kiln that I use and I have all, uh, some different apparatus. I used to dry sticks and I have to make the dowels. And then, so I dry the wood then I make the dowels and I have to dry those. So just waiting for the wood to dry takes a while, but I have a lot of dry wood now. Um, and here's what I have. So I have ash, which is what these are. And we'll give you some close-ups. I'll talk a lot about the tips and all in a minute. So I have ash. Obviously I have all the North American woods. I just bought a bunch of persimmon. I found the biggest persimmon tree that was dead and someone sold it to me. So I cut that up and that's drying. Uh, Actually, some of it's dry. I've just started making sticks, but none of those are ready yet. And so I have maple and persimmon. Uh, you guys probably don't want maple. It's just a regular maple. Who cares about that? But I do have bloodwood, which is a beautiful wood. That's this. It's very red. I don't have a lot of this. It's pretty hard for me to get. And it's super hard. So it's kind of like teak. If any of you have seen teak. So you see that like a normal stick sounds like this. That's an ash, which is close to um, like maple. It's harder than maple, but close to oak. Okay, or hickory. And this is, um, go this way. This is bloodwood. 
so you see how non-resonant it is okay super heavy super dense so that's a heavy wood and then i have bocote which is this pretty wood okay and we'll go through all these again for the tips so i just wanted to show you that's a very brown wood and that's a higher pitch that's like a normal wood but heavy so it's lighter than blood wood okay then i have white wingy which is a very rare wood i don't have much of this left so i don't know if i can i have to see how much i have left okay this is a great wood for drumsticks it's gorgeous hopefully you can see the grain there okay this is this is african then i have black wenge i have a lot of this all right so this is great wood too and dense all right and then i, I have several of those here then i have purple heart now i don't recommend purple heart for drumsticks so if you guys want these for display sticks and they're they're not good for playing because they're very they're almost like if you ever hit a baseball with a broken bat that's what it feels like they um they vibrate okay because it's so hard so not a great wood for playing but just gorgeous and it keeps getting i just made these so they're not as purple they'll get more and more purple uh, as time goes on by next week they'll be dark purple okay deep purple all right uh the, all these are i have a lot of black wenge here i'll show you the tips this is tiger wood really cool wood i love this wood for drumsticks i do not have much of this left i've sold probably 50 pairs of these these are a big favorite and they have it's called tiger wood it's got these like tiger kind of spots gorgeous stuff hopefully you can see that all right then i have one of my favorite woods for drumsticks this is lace wood or leopard wood and if you quarter saw it like i do on a bandsaw you get this beautiful leopard print <laughs> on them okay it's a beautiful tight grain wood makes great drumsticks i sell a lot of these it's pretty much my favorite drumstick wood and then i have paduk uh these are some specialty sticks i made for someone i'm shipping these out a couple couple days but um i don't know how i'm going to do that <laughs> to figure out how to ship in this in this current situation so this i don't recommend this as much for drumsticks but he wanted a really cool tip he drew it what he wanted so i made it for him you can see it there i think he's going to display these and not play with them is what i understand so hope, hopefully not because they're kind of brittle so paduk's great for marimba bars it's not as good as rosewood but not great for drumsticks now this is another favorite this is zebra wood you probably saw me playing with zebra wood on some of the wilcoxon solos these are some different tips that someone wanted i can make this tip for anybody it's a little more difficult a little more expensive but this is heartwood of the zebra wood um so it's the center of the tree it's more colorful and heavier okay uh the the uh sap wood of a zebra wood tree is um is quite a bit lighter closer to the weight of maple almost these are twice as heavy so they'll be in the 70 70 gram to 80 gram range the heartwood that is all right and then these are this is this is a light blood wood i had some of this so it's a pretty wood it's lighter than the other blood wood. some of it's light some of it's dark the heartwood which is the center of the tree tends to be darker than the uh, sapwood so this is a nice stick very very heavy the heaviest i have besides bubinga but i'm all sold out of bubinga i sold all of those and this is a beautiful set that i just made not sold yet of heartwood zebra wood they're gorgeous um, i might keep these for myself they feel great Yeah, I'll have to see if I want to sell these. <laughs> That's the hardest thing. You know, I'll make a pair of sticks and they'll be so pretty and feel so good. I just want to keep them. But I've had <laughs> over the years, I got probably a dozen pairs that I've kept and then um, I have to resist, <laughs> you know. Okay, so that's uh, the woods I have right now. And let's talk about the tips. So one tip that I love to use to practice my technique is a barrel tip. So a barrel tip is this. These are, this is Wengi, 
black wingy. And hopefully you can see that tip. I made some special tools that makes it easier for me to make this tip. You can grind um, lathe tools and make any shape you want. You just got to know how to sharpen and do that. Okay, so you see that tip. And these are great for, uh, for you know, they're, they're top heavy just a little. So I use these a lot for practicing my singles. They have a lot of top weight, okay, to them. It's one of the reasons I, I like them. So that's Wenge. That's a barrel tip. Now, I make all sizes of barrel tips. Like, I, like, I'll show you a smaller size. That's a smaller barrel tip. I can make them really tiny, but then you lose your balance of, of the weight. Okay? So, if those of you who don't know, there's, there's several, uh, there's different parts to a drumstick. So, you got the tip. You got the neck right here that tapers into the tip. And then you got the, the rest of the stick. Okay? So it starts about here. The taper ends here and then stays straight here. And some people taper their stick down. Like, uh, do I have a pair? Yeah. So I've done that on some sticks where I taper them down. If you can see that. It looks neat. It, it's not going to affect much because it's right at the end of the stick. Maybe a little bit of the weight, but not more than two or three grams. Okay. So uh, this is a good balanced stick with that tip. It's early in the morning here. I haven't warmed up yet, but <laughs> okay. So that's um, that's a small tip, barrel tip. Now I also make kind of drum set stick tips. This is one of those. It's a diamond tip. If you can see that, hopefully. So that's a diamond tip. They're harder to make because there's no lathe tool that you can use to make this by fast. You have to just go nice and slow. Okay like that because um, it's a diamond so it's not a barrel barrel tips are easier to make so these are a little more expensive now you could say you want to use these for drum set the only issue is they're really hard and they're pretty expensive so you know as soon as you hit a symbol you're going to gouge the stick change the weight it's fine with me you do it they're your sticks you do whatever you want with them be careful that you don't break symbols this is seriously hard wood it's actually harder than brass in a way you can you can do some damage so be careful when you're using the really hard woods now if you want to check woods there's something called a jack of scale you can go online uh, there's some good wood um, sites there that will show you how hard these woods are uh, and and you'll see like a wood like wenge is going to be much much harder than an american wood like maple or oak or or even hickory which is pretty hard wood or even persimmon which is the hardest i think persimmon's like 2400 on the Janka scale, I think, if I remember correctly. So that's a super hard wood. That's why it's so great for drumsticks. Unfortunately, it's incredibly rare. That's why, you know, many of the drumstick manufacturers have stopped using it. It's hard to get it. Uh, you waste a lot. It's not consistent. It has a lot of defects. So it's expensive to work with, persimmon is. Okay, so that's a diamond tip. Then I have large diamond tips like that. Very tricky to make these. So if you want this, it's going to cost you. Okay. Uh, and then I have elongated tips like these. This is Paduk. Um, but they're okay. it's okay for thinner sticks. It's actually very nice for thinner sticks. For thicker sticks, for some reason, it vibrates a little more. Believe it or not, it sounds weird, but it's true. Okay. So this is an elongated tip. Difficult to make again. So a lot of the drumstick manufacturers, they use computer controlled machine so the stick just goes in there and then takes like you know probably 10 seconds to make a drumstick but this these sticks I'm doing just by myself and I do one at a time and then I got to match them up and use my calipers and all that so they take a lot longer all right so this tips uh tricky to make so uh that's you know uh, oh I think I showed you this the specialty tip. yeah I did this is spe a specialty tip someone wanted so that's very tricky. Also, I'll make tips like this. These are just maple. This was a prototype. But you see that little band around there? That adds a little weight to the top. 
I really like these sticks actually. They're pretty thick though, so they probably work better for pipe drumming, you know. Okay, so I can do all kinds of weird designs like that. So in a nutshell, the the uh, elongated tips are going to be more expensive, and the barrel tips are going to be less expensive because I can make them faster. Then all the sticks have a finish on them. It's a a, a beeswax uh, coating that I mix with some other things. It's it's uh, makes the grip really nice. It's not too it's not sticky at all, and it puts a little bit of shine on the stick. So it's not a polyurethane. It's the secret formula, you know, but I've been using it for a long time. I did a lot of experimenting and um, it's a super nice finish. Now, the thing you got to remember with these hardwoods, if you play on a pad that's got a coated head or a drum, you should sand that pad or head with like, you know, 220 grit sandpaper lightly, because what will happen, the tips are so hard that when you play that, it will literally sand your tips down. Especially if you use them on um, Roland, like electric drums, um, the mesh heads, you, you, within a couple months, you'll have no tip left. So I just need to put that out there because the tips are so hard, they actually sand themselves. That's true of all sticks, okay, but these especially. So that's one thing you should look out for. Um, so I think that should do it. As far as prices go, they vary. So with the stock that I have right now, I have a, I've been making them the last couple of days, like going crazy in there. It relieves stress. So I've been doing that. So right now I have a decent supply of um, a few drum set thin sticks, a lot of workout sticks. So if you're interested, uh, give me a holler. I'll put my email here at the end. Also, I'll put some links to the old uh, Drummer's World website where you can see the people who used to sell them. I'll also give you a link to my blog so you can see the lathe and my really basic setup that I use to make these. I have a blog that I, I haven't updated my website in probably nine years, so I'm just too busy. But you'll see this old post that I did on there when I was really making a lot of sticks. Like I was in there pretty much um, from midnight till 3 a.m every day <laughs> okay so uh hope you all are doing doing well and hanging in there and we'll see you soon bye